43 days in power, I think Mr Starmer has been there. Is he more sort of, uh, is he a bit Blair-like or is he more Michael Foote at the moment? It's definitely not Michael Foote. Michael Foote didn't win a single general election. Um, and he's probably surpassed Tony in one way in that um, he's faced down riots successfully. Um, and, you know, he saw off the far right thugs, the racist riots, uh, and people have been banged up um, for trying to burn people to death in a hotel. So um, I think it's good. But uh, that think, would have happened. Like, yeah. Any government would have jailed somebody who tried to. Uh, it's, not clear. It's, not, it's, not, it's not clear that, that the Tories would have been able to move the justice system as fast. Well, uh, no, they did that in 2011, well. John. Exactly the same thing happened in 2011. Uh, you remember it? Not, it, it, it was the, 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 the London. The London riots probably were not investigated properly afterwards. Um, uh, in my view, they, the, the, and the police force hadn't had gone uh, through the, um, the the decade of cuts, and so the cuts in prisons, the cuts in courts, and the cuts in police put such a huge strain uh, on the system, uh, but Keir managed to steer it through. And he's moved on uh, onshore wind farms, uh, he's moved on NATO, he's moved uh, on Europe. There's all kinds of different movement going on. That's kind there of, is. He's moved, uh, on, he's moved on pensioners' fuel allowance as well, hasn't he? I mean, the unions, you know, 70-odd grand a year train yeah. driver gets a boost, and if you're a pensioner, he's, you lose your winter fuel allowance. Pensioners got an 8.5% increase uh, this April because the triple lock and they're going to get a, an increase. That next. was under the Tories, of course. No, the triple lock is, is bipartisan policy. Uh, there's been 14 years the triple lock, but next year's uh, pension increase is going to be larger than the entire winter fuel allowance. That's the case for targeting the winter fuel allowance, is that every year in, in recent years, pensioners have been getting a larger increase in the state pension uh, than, than, than the value of the winter fuel allowance. I think it's right's target on those most... In I, listen, I, I, I tend to agree with the, the broader point. I used to argue, why does David Cameron's mum get winter fuel yeah, allowance? I mean, yeah, yeah. It's slightly unfortunate yeah, I picked out Mr Cameron's mum. It wasn't personal. No, it was just, a, just an example, as I used to give. But, of course, you know... There are if, some pensioner billionaires, yeah, I know. Indeed, indeed, all of that, and we get that, and it's, you know, yeah, demographically, yeah. it's not yeah. the worst-off group. But had this been under the Tories... You know, John, you'd have been sitting here now telling me what cruel, horrible, despicable people they are. No, I, def I mean, I've, uh, I've, I've never really believed in the gimmick that is the winter fuel line. So remember, it was brought in by Gordon Brown at a time when uh, yeah. the pension went up uh, only in line with uh, it prices. It was only temporary as well, amazing, John, was it? Wasn't it meant to be that amazing time when um, the, the pension went up by 75 yeah. people a year, and Gordon just pushed that through rather than thinking, that's so insulting, can we not at least make it a pound? You know, it's like, <laughs> it it's like yes, pen, you know, if he made it into a pound, it wouldn't seem so penny pinching. And I think yeah. he. So I think there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a danger that this government end up being a bit penny pinching because of their fiscal rules, and they end up sounding a bit like Tony and Gordon in the first couple of years. But look, I think he's hit the ground running and not dawdling, and that's the biggest and most important thing. The, government hit the ground dawdling and uh, never really get momentum. I, I wonder. You see, I, I find it very hard to work out Keir Starmer's. Mm. What, what the core of his political ideology is. I sort of knew it with Tony Blair um, and even with Gordon Brown. I could see what he was about. <clears throat> I, I, I knew what, what Thatcher was about, etc. Mm. Um, I, I'm struggling a little bit with Keir Starmer. And I yeah. wonder whether this whole thing of the unions, whether he's getting these very awkward moments out the way very quickly so he can draw a line under I, it. People will forget about it in half an hour. Look, it's, a good, is that look, what's it's, a good, look, it's a good question. But, you know, the real dispute and the, say, the junior doctor's dispute, those have both have been going on for a couple of years, dragging on yeah. for a couple of years. And in the end, you, you have to settle those, otherwise you get disruption of travel, you get disruption in, 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 in hospitals, which has caused some of the increase in the waiting lists. You know, it's a, it's a way, I think Keir sees it like this. The government should be fair to people. It's been fair to the pensioners, in the way I've argued. It's been fair to the junior doctors. Certainly, the pace. We I mean, fair to the, the, the train drivers stopping that disruption of essential travel uh, for, for those of us who use the railways. And I think he's saying if you're competent and you listen to people's arguments and you give them a fair answer, you can take the heat out of things and then we can all get together to do the big thing, which is pushing the growth. And look, there must be, Rishi said it must be feeling sick when seeing the growth figures coming out at the moment, month by month. He should have probably waited until... Uh, <laughs> yes, well, yeah, we, we discussed that yesterday. And I think, to be honest, I think that was he got so fascinated by this thing uh, called Rwanda that he couldn't really... He didn't no, know I think that's right. He got, he got obsessed with it. But I think Labour's, Labour's inherited, in a sense, 
some growth. And so if you if you deal with the disputes, you act competently. You can go, you know, let's do the big thing. Let's get the economy going. I get going. that, John, but yeah, this, this, is, this is, of course, is a government that has acknowledged it's got a £22 billion black hole, yeah. might even be bigger than that, and, but it is finding money for these areas, but yet telling us there's going to be huge tax cuts in other areas. Indeed. Now, I know it's all yeah. about balance, but there is a sense here that Keir Starmer, which is why I talked about his political ideology, Keir Starmer's heart is very much to the left of where Tony Blair's was. Oh look, I think I think it is absolutely. I say I, I, I've said it quite regularly, uh, maybe even to you. Keir Starmer is not a Blairite. Uh, I also think that's a pretty good thing because Blairism was for the 20th century, and next year is going to be the beginning of the second quarter of the 21st century, yeah. not the beginning of the 21st century. Second quarter. You need different approaches in different times, and you know the biggest crisis we're probably facing. Uh, in the country is, is, is energy, climate crisis, it's the Ukraine war, inflation, lots of these things tie together. So for, la for Labour to actually move us onto renewable energy makes us independent uh, from Russia. It makes us, it can cut our bills uh, because if you can insulate homes at the same time, you, you, we can actually see a solution which gives you growth, gives you falling prices, gives you security. And I think probably the biggest overlap between Keir and uh, Tony is Keir's full-throated support for NATO, his full-throated support for the American alliance, uh, and in a sense that he will put, as he said, country first. And I think that patriotic uh, kind of uh, laborism that he represents, that's very attractive, because a lot of people think uh, that you should put the country first, not the party. But I, I was looking at some of that. I mean, you mentioned energy and the like. I was looking at some of the uh, the spads mm -hmm. and the advisors around mm -hmm. Ed Miliband's department. I mean, some of these yeah. people were to the left of Jeremy Corbyn, for goodness sake. I mean, this is a Marxist loving going over the, on over there in Ed's department, isn't it? And, oh, look, and, um, that's, I mean, and that's, uh, look, my, 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 two, of my, two of my good uh, political friends are in Ed's department as advisors. Well, you know who I'm talking no, about. No, no, no. They're, 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 they're materialists, not Marxists. They believe that there's a reality to the economy and need to manage it in a certain direction. And the business, I mean, think about it, business needs incentives. And the one of the things, the big things that Great British Energy is doing is it's going to partner with private sector companies and take some of the risk. Now, that's the least Marxist thing I've ever heard, that you're actually going to share the risk with a private sector company. Well, I mean, that's, of course, the Great British Energy um, yeah. debate, isn't it? Whether that yeah. results in uh, lower bills, you alluded to it there. There's not really many economists can, can see any time soon, John, that we're going to see lower energy bills. That's Look, I, think it's the the I think it's the combination with insulation and, and more efficient you know, building of modern houses. It's, it's a set of things, and it's also detaching us from the fluctuation of oil and gas market prices, which can be affected by geopolitics okay. in Ukraine. Final question, that's then. How, how are you yeah. rating 43 days in the job he's had. I know. 43 days. Days. Yeah, not even yeah, two yeah. months there. Um, out of 10, what are you giving Mr. Starmer yeah, so He's, he's definitely got a 12 out of 10 for me. 12 out, come on. That's a... That's a, <laughs> no, that, that's, a, that's, a pref, that's a prefect uh, rating. 10 out, ten, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. He actually has put, put wrong in getting his own cabinet together, getting his own policies in place fast, and facing up to an emergency, a national emergency, which which is a test for any leader. I think he came through that well and brought the country back together again. I, I would expect nothing less from you, John. Thank you, sir. John McTiernan, yeah. political strategist and former advisor to Tony Blair.